one way that you might get a data set is that somebody might actually write down the numbers on a piece of paper and mail it to you. But more likely in this era of the internet, you're probably going to be downloading a lot of your data from the internet. So this lecture is about how do you use R to download files. And the reason why that we want to use R to download files as opposed to pointing and clicking is because then the downloading process can be included in the processing script. And so you get a more complete picture of how the data were collected and generated. So the first thing to keep in mind is that uh, we need to know what directories we're working in. So uh, if you took the data scientist toolbox, you, looked, you learned a little bit about um, uh, CD and uh, the current working directories and moving around within the directories. So the two main commands when we're dealing with directories in R are going to be uh, get WD and set WD. And so get WD uh, is, does exactly what you'd expect. It gets the working directory. It tells you what directory you're currently in. And setwd actually sets a different working directory that you might want to move to. So one way that you can do that is you can actually use it uh, move relative. So for example, if you do setwd dot dot slash like this, what will end up happening is you'll move it up one directory. So remember when we were talking about directory structure, uh, directory is up if it's a superset or if it's above the uh, directory that you're currently in. You can also use absolute paths. So for example, you can type setwd users JT leak data, and what that'll do is that'll move you into that directory that you've specified there exactly. So an important distinction in Windows is that you have to use backslashes rather than forward slashes. So this is an example of a, the way that a path might look in a Windows machine as opposed to uh, um, a, a Mac or a Linux machine. So if you need more help with that, go check out the data science uh, tool doc, toolbox lectures. So one thing that we might want to do is, before we uh, collect a bit of data, is to create a directory for um, that data to fall into. So uh, file.exists is a function in R. So if you are in a directory and you type file.exists directory name like this, it will look within that directory and see if there's a subdirectory called directory name. And so if it, doesn't, uh, if it does exist, it will return true. And if it doesn't exist, it will return false. And so um, dir.create, like this, will actually create a directory if it doesn't exist. So here's a little bit of code that checks to see if there's a data directory. So it says, if the data subdirectory exists, then uh, this will return a uh, true. And so what will end up happening is this will be false and nothing will happen. If the data directory doesn't exist, this will return false, and this uh, exclamation point will negate it, and so that will be true, and so then it will create a directory called uh, data. So you'll be seeing a command a lot like this throughout the lecture, and that's where you uh, create a data directory if it doesn't already exist. So the main way that we get data from the internet if we're talking about files is with the uh, download.file function. And so the download.file function downloads a file from the internet, um, you can do this by hand, of course. You can go to the uh, website that you're interested in and click and press download. Um, but if you do it by uh, using download.file, it'll actually improve the reproducibility. If you've taken that class, you'll understand what I mean by that. And if not, it'll just, you can imagine intuitively, it's easier to keep track of everything that you've done if you've included the download process as part of your script. The important parameters are the URL, so that's the, the place that you're going to be getting the data from. Um, the dest file is the destination file, where that data is going to go, and then the method. So we'll talk a little bit about why the method needs to be specified, particularly when dealing with uh, HTTPS. So it's useful for downloading tab-delimited CSV files, Excel files, a whole bunch of other different files from the internet. So it's sort of agnostic to the file type that you might be downloading. So an as an example, we're going to be using the Baltimore fixed camera data. So these are speed cameras that are set up around Baltimore, which have unfortunately caught your instructor more than once speeding and sent him a ticket. And so you might want to be able to download these data and figure out where they are. Where they are. So if you go over here uh, under the export button on this website, you actually get a bunch of different kinds of files. And so, for example, you might go down to CSV, which is one of these uh, types of files that you would see over here on the right-hand side. And if you right-click, you can copy the link address. So now that's the link address just to the CSV file that we might want to download with these camera positions. And so then what we do is we take that link that we uh, copied and we put it right here. We save it into a variable called file URL just like this. 
And then we passed a download file, that file URL that we collected off the website. And we say, we'd like to put it in this uh, data directory and we'd like to call it cameras.csv. We're using .csv because that's the extension that's used for comma separated files. And the method that we're gonna use is, called, is curl. This is necessary because this website is an HTTPS, a secure website. And so if you're doing this from a Mac, you need to specify the method is curl in order for it to work. Um, if you're working from Windows, I don't think that you need to set the method to be curl. The default method will work all right for you. So then if you list the files in this data directory, so this is sort of like the ls command that we saw in the command line interface, you see that we now have one file in that directory and it's the cameras.csv file. An important component of downloading files from the internet is that those files might change. So for example, if they update the cameras, there might be a new set of cameras and the data that we're analyzing might be different. So you wanna keep track of the date that you've downloaded the data and you can do that with the date function. So you just um, assign to date downloaded a very, uh, the uh, command date and that will give you the date that those data were um, downloaded. So with those data having been downloaded uh, and knowing the date, you can go back and see if you can find the right version of the file if you have trouble later on. So if the URL starts with HTTP, you should be okay. Even if the URL starts with HTTPS on Windows, you should be okay. Um, on a Mac, you need to set the method equal to curl if you uh, have HTTPS. One thing to keep in mind is that this is actually going out and downloading a file from the internet. And so depending on the size of the file and your internet connection, this could end up taking a while. So um, sometimes what you may want to do is have the instruction list, but when you actually run new versions of the processing software, you don't rerun the file download um, every single time if it's a really big file. And remember to record when the file was downloaded so that you can go back and check the version of the file later when you're trying to figure things out. So that's how you download a file from the internet in R.